to 20 at twilight. A video post that provides a 20 minute guided meditation, a way of praying with scripture to conclude the day focusing on and resting in the presence of God. I am Tracy Leslie, a certified spiritual director, life coach and senior pastor at Trinity United Methodist Church in downtown Lafayette. Friends, as the shadows, evening shadows gather, may you find peace in releasing your burdens to God and laying down all that is heavy. May you feel the lightness that comes from resting in God's spirit. May all that is unforgiven in you be released to God. And may your fears yield to deep tranquility and trust. We light our candle, a symbol of the presence of Christ, the light of the world. Let us pray. We call upon you, O Lord, come quickly to our aid. Give ear to our voice when we call to you. Let our prayers be counted as incense before you and the lifting up of our hands as an evening sacrifice. Amen. I'd invite you to close your eyes now and just take a few deep breaths in and out. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Clear your mind of any lingering thoughts from the day. Just kind of push them to the side. They'll be there when you're done. Will your body soften and your tensions ease? Enter into the mystery that is the vast love and mercy of God. That mercy and grace that surrounds and enfolds you through every day and night. This week at Trinity, I'm preaching from the prophet Jeremiah. The prophets are often law hard, I'm sorry, hard words to hear because they frequently speak of God punishing the people for their sin. Now, although it's hard, I hope that we can put some of those questions of God's punishment to the side for this evening. I know that's hard, but um, just kind of Push those to the side as well. Save that as another topic for another time. But receive now, allow it to absorb into you. These words to God's people spoken through the prophet Jeremiah so long ago. I looked on the earth and lo, it was a formless void and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and lo, they were quaking, and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked, and lo, there was no one at all, and all the birds of the air had fled. I looked, and lo, the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation. Yet I will not make a full end or a complete end. 
Those verses end with this promise of a remnant. But there's another verse of encouragement in this passage. The very first word I read, this idea of seeing a formless void, that phrase in Hebrew only occurs in one other place in our scripture, Genesis chapter one, verse two, the first story of creation. We read that once there was chaotic nothingness, just a big void with no form or substance, and yet out of that, God created life. Plants and animals and people and everything that we enjoy. This weekend marks yet another anniversary of 9-11 and the destruction of the Twin Towers. When 9-11 happened, I was living in Chicagoland, and I remember one night before I went to bed looking out my window at this year's tower on the horizon. I wasn't even a native to Chicagoland, and yet that tower had become the focal point of the horizon for me. And the thought that it could be destroyed left me suddenly feeling this sudden anxiety. I couldn't have imagined what it must have felt like for the people living in New York. I can't imagine what it feels like right now for people living in the cities and towns of Ukraine being bombed by the Russians. Nor can I imagine what it's like for so many people in the Western half of our US, where ironically in some places, people's homes are going up in smoke, entire communities wiped off the map. And in other places, homes are being washed away, again, wiped off the map. There is much about our world to lament. We had a prior 20 at twilight around this idea of lament when we wrote a personal note, lament. But tonight I want to invite you to write not a personal or individual lament, but a communal lament. A lament for our world and those who have experienced chaos and destruction. Homes and communities transformed into formless voids. You may look back even on 9-11 so many years ago. This lament may be on behalf of the people of Ukraine or people here in the US who have lost their homes or people in so many other places around the world that you may be aware of that are suffering. So I invite you to grab a pen and a piece of paper or just open a notes app on your laptop or your tablet Go ahead and pause the video if you need to so you can grab those things. And I'm gonna guide you through the writing of a lament. Yeah, and at any point, if you need more time, just pause the video and then restart it when you're ready. As people of God, communal lament is a ritual. It is a process whereby we can process our grief and our loss with God. So laments begin with a title or an address. So when you pray, how do you address God? How do you name God? And how does that reflect your understanding of God? Write for yourself, what will be your address to God? How will you name God? Second, cry out to God, asking for God's help for our world and its people. You can use words that reflect 
a crisis, one currently happening or one in the past that people are still suffering from. Could be a political crisis like the war in Ukraine, an environmental crisis like the fires and floods out west, whatever it might be. Find a way to cry out to God. Perhaps you might ask God to deliver us or to strengthen us. What do you want from God? Next, unpack this crisis. This will be the longest part of your lament as you describe in detail what it is you are seeing happening in the world that is upsetting and discouraging and in, to you that creates anxiety that has resulted in chaos and destruction. Again, take as much time as you need. Feel welcome to pause the video as you describe for God, what does this chaos, this formless void look like? Now state why God should help. This is kind of that dog in the hunt part of the lament. We appeal to God's reputation, right? If, if God created all that is, if God sustains creation, then we appeal to God's nature. That's why God should help, right? God made it all. God sustains it all. Next, express your confidence in God's ability 
to respond to your prayer, to the world's needs that you have identified. After all, it doesn't make much sense to complain to some, someone who's powerless to help, right? So we cry out to God from a place of confidence. So express your confidence in God's ability to respond to the crisis you have named, the suffering you have named. Finally, thank yous have become a bit of a forgotten relic in our culture today, right? But everyone who helps us should be acknowledged and thanked. So how will you demonstrate your gratitude to God when you observe places of healing and restoration? How will you praise God, thank God, when you see those places where chaos is once again being ordered, a new life begins to appear. Let us pray. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord. Be near to those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. May you have a restful night, and may you have light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord.